So today I'm doing something that I haven't I haven't done for a while, um, but I really like. So it's paper marbling, and it makes these really pretty sort of abstract patterns. Um, you've probably seen them. Um, they're often used as like the cover paper for fancy books. Uh, if it's a modern edition, it'll be an imitation. Uh, if it's if it's old, it might actually be real marbled paper. Um, and this is something I do periodically. Um, and uh, I use it as wrapping paper, um, whatever, things like that. Um, and I decided I wanted some to use as just like detail to put in the background and stuff in the animations I'm making. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put all of this, um, but just, you know, sort of textural fill. Um, in the in the various parts of the of the sets um, you know it has these these nice sort of complicated patterns they're a little bit grungy um, generally they're great so the the process for making it is is quite simple um, it is you you take a, a container with water in it um, that's been thickened so it has kind of a, a slightly goopy consistency and then you you drip paint uh, or ink onto the surface of the water and then um, swirl it or or disrupt it in, in other ways um, and then you lay a sheet of paper down onto it and that paper picks up the ink um, and then you can dry it and it's um, and it makes a permanent a permanent mark um, so it's it's relatively simple um, the process it's quick it's dirty uh, unfortunately, um, it gets ink everywhere. Um, you, usually my hands are covered in ink, although this time they washed off pretty clean. Um, but you can do it with materials that you can buy at a well-stocked art store. Um, uh, I use acrylic ink. You can also do it with oil paint, um, although that requires much more intense ventilation. Um, or watercolors, uh, there's techniques that use that. Um, the only thing that's a little hard to come by is the mordant, uh, which you you treat the paper with to make the ink stick well. Um, and also the material that you use to thicken the water. Um, I use aluminum sulfate for the mordant, uh, which is cheap and easy to get, but you might have to order it. Um, and carrageenan for the thickener, uh, which you probably also have to order. And it's super fun. Um, and it makes great wrapping paper, or I'm hoping great set decorations. Um, we'll see in the coming weeks uh, how well that works in practice. So now I'm going to um, talk a little more in detail about the materials and the process and then show you some, some of the, the making of this paper. Um, the, the material I'm using to float the paper in the marbling, uh, which I think they call the size, um, is Kerrigan, uh, which is a, a, um, a seaweed-based thickener. It makes like monster snot. Like if you think of like a horror movie and there's like slime dripping out of a monster's face, is this stuff. Um, so what you, what you want to do is you want to make a, a fluid that's just a little bit like thick and sticky, but not jello. Um, and so you want a dilute solution of something like this. There's there's a bunch of thickeners you can use. This just happens to be the one that I use and it's, it's traditional for paper marbling. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take some of the carrageenan um, and some warm water. This is a little hot, so I'm gonna add some cold water to it. Because um, the carrageenan really doesn't want to dissolve very much. Um, and that's really good. And then um, you wanna add about a tablespoon per gallon. Uh, it, it's not super important how much. Um, it just changes the thickness of the fluid a little bit. Um, You just want to stir it up. It's you can you can sort of see it turns kind of crumbly. Um, some people do this in a blender. It makes it really fuzzy or foamy, um, which I don't like. Um, so I just do it with a whisk because um, also I just do everything with hand tools. Um, and it's you can already see that it's goopy um, and. Uh, and mix this until the, the lumps are mostly broken up. Um, it's never going to be totally perfect, and that's fine. Um, uh, 
you know, that's good enough. Um, and then uh, you just dilute it down with cool water. Um, and I know that this jar full is about enough to fill the tank that I'm using, so. Um, And I just let that sit for um, um, a few minutes overnight. Uh, it, people give different advice. Uh, I usually do it for like about an hour. You just want to make sure that everything's rehydrated. Um, it's, you can't keep it for more than a few days because it does, the carrageenan breaks down. Um, so you sort of, you basically have to use it in a day or two. Um, but I'm gonna let it sit for half an hour, an hour, and then I'll be ready to do the marbling. So the, the next thing that I need to do is um, put some mordant on the paper that I'm going to use. So um, mordant is a material that's, that interacts with the ink in some way to make it stick better to the paper. There's a bunch of different kinds um, that, that interact with different inks in different ways. Uh, the one I'm using is aluminum sulfate um, and it works pretty well for the inks that I use. So, so that's, that's the one I use for marbling. And it's real easy. You just put a scoop of it in some water um, and it dissolves, it dissolves quite easily. Um, and like that, and just turns into you know, very slightly cloudy water. Um, and then you take uh, something that you can brush really easily onto the surface of paper with. Um, I normally use a sponge, uh, but I can't for the life of me find a clean sponge, so I'm going to use a cloth. Um, the uh, you want to get this on as evenly as possible because you will actually see the pattern that the mordant is applied to the paper in the final ink um, because it, it really strongly affects how well the ink sticks to the paper. Um, so if you don't get the mordant on super uniformly, you will absolutely be able to see that in the final product. Um, so it's, it's worth doing carefully. Um, but it's not complicated. So you just take sheets of paper, uh, these are just sheets torn out of a cheap sketchbook, uh, which is adequate for what I'm doing. Um, you can obviously use nicer paper. Um, you can do the same process on like silk or like fancy fabric as well. Um, it actually works on a lot of materials. You just want to get the, get the mordant really smoothly over the paper. You don't want it sopping wet, um, but it should be damp. And then uh, you don't need to do both sides. Uh, I often do just uh, because. It also helps the paper dry a little more, you know, a little more flat. So once you've got them coated, um, you just want to lay them out so that they dry reasonably flat. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, they don't have to dry individually. I always dry them in a stack. Um, and you don't have to get them bone dry. Um, this is like the like the Karagian, um This is a material with a limited shelf life once it's prepared. Um, so you don't want to leave these for days. Um, I think you want to use them in a day. Uh, you can dry them until they're completely dry. Um, I usually use the sheets slightly damp, and I find that that works pretty well. Um, but some people I know do do dry them completely. Um, I don't think it matters particularly, um, so long as you don't leave it for too long, because it will oxidize and then it no longer works. Um, so I'm going to leave these, you know, for an hour or two. So the ink I use for marbling is um, is this acrylic ink. Uh, there's a, a number of different brands. They all seem to work about the same. You sort of have to experiment it, it, with brands and colors, and um, the color seems to matter more than who the manufacturer is. But I found that all acrylic ink works reasonably well. Um, you basically just want something that will that will stay on the surface of the of the thickened water in the tank um, without dispersing too quickly or sinking. 
Um, and this stuff seems to work pretty well. And it's also, it tends to be very dense in terms of color, which is nice because it goes on the paper pretty thinly. Um, and so you, you need a strong color. Um, so it's usually worth buying like slightly nicer inks uh, just because they have, they have more pigment typically. Um, colors that I use a lot, uh, like red and blue, I buy in large bottles, which is why I have big bottles of red ink sitting around. Um, somewhere I have a bottle of blue ink. I don't actually know where it is right now. Um, uh, cause red and blue is sort of my favorite color combination for this. Um, but you know, whatever, whatever works. Uh, there historically people used a lot of different inks like oil paints, uh, watercolors. Um, there's a number of traditions around like water-based, uh, black inks to make sort of cloudy forms. Um, uh, the indie ink I have, I found doesn't work very well. So I'm actually not sure what those, what those, the, the black ink, um, traditions are based on, um, but they're, they produce beautiful results, uh, but the acrylic ink works for me. Um, so that's what we're going to use today. There are a whole range of tools that are traditional for, for paper marbling. Um, one of the most important one is a comb. Um, this is a handmade comb. Um, it's a piece of plastic with some, uh, bamboo skewers stuck through it. You can see it's stained with ink. I've, I've used it before. Um, and and so there's, there's nicer ones that are made of wood, you can make them with metal, um, uh, but they all, they all have the same properties though. A bunch of relatively thin um, sticks or rods, uh, evenly spaced, and you use it for, for scraping through the fluid to make these linear patterns, uh, parallel, parallel lines. Uh, the, the tape that's sticking this together has failed, so I'm going to have to fix that before I use it. Um, the, the main tools other than that that I use are um, just sticks for, for swirling and in just adjusting the pattern on the surface of the water before I, before I print. Um, and then I also use these, this bundle of straw. This is cut from a broom um, for sort of flicking uh, stuff to get like splashes and dots of paint onto the surface. Um, and those are basically, other than like, the little eyedroppers that come in the tops of the, the ink bottles, which I also use. Um, those are my main tools, and I do basically everything with that. There's a whole world of technique for this, and people have different specialized tools for doing different things. Um, my set is, is very, very simple, um, but it's what I know how to use, because this is, it gets very technical and skilled to make particular patterns, and I'm not good at any of that. I just blob ink on, and it works okay. All right. I don't have a really good surface for doing this uh, in my house, um, so I'm going to do it on the floor in the bathroom, uh, which is already just wrecked with a decade's worth of studio stains and dropped hair dryer, hair rollers, and all sorts of other stuff. So I can't make it any worse in here. Um, okay, so uh, this is the last major tool for doing this, um, and you can see mine is pretty jury rigged. This is the tank. Um, so. Uh, you need a flat, watertight container that is uh, just a little bit bigger than whatever sheet of paper you're going to be printing. Um, so mine is, you can see the paper fits in there pretty good. Um, and uh, this is the most jury rig possible since it is the lid of a cardboard box with a uh, trash bag liner. Um, but it's watertight and it does work. Um, if I were doing this more often, I would get a better tank, but it's just not worth it. Now you can see I've used it before because it's covered in ink. Um, so then I take the, the thickened water, um, so this is the carrageenan that I mixed up earlier, and most of the lumps have dissolved, um, and so now it's just kind of a goopy, a goopy fluid. And you just fill the tank. Um, it doesn't have to be very deep. Um, and this should be enough. It might have been nice to have a little bit more, but that's fine. Okay. Um, and just get it full and even. And really, you just need to be able to float one sheet of paper, so that's all that matters. Okay, so that's the setup, and now comes the fun part. Um, I haven't done this for a while, so I'm going to have to remember how this works. Uh, so the, um, the basic idea is you want to float ink on the surface of the fluid, and because the fluid is a little bit thick, um, it, the ink doesn't just immediately spread or dissolve, it sort of floats into a pool. Um, and then you take those pools of ink and you do things with them. 
and then you lay a sheet of paper on top and you pull it off and the ink transfers to the paper, most of it, um, and then you're done. These are, these are monoprints, so you have to redistribute the ink every single sheet um, when, you, when you do it, um, which is, makes it, you know, not real fast, but it's, it's sort of fun to do. Um, so you want to put the ink on pretty gently, uh, otherwise it will have a tendency to sink. Hmm. The, um, the, the, the amount of surficant in the ink controls how quickly it spreads. Um, and I found that sometimes you just need to get a surface of ink, like a skim of ink on it, um, before this, it really starts to, to create nice puddles. Um, you can see this is pretty faint. Um, but hopefully you can see that it's made little, little blobs. Um, and I'm trying to remember which of these inks works better than others. We'll see. And as the ink spreads, they sort of push each other around, um, which makes patterns that are kind of nice. Um, People who are very good at this can get a lot of control over how the ink moves on the surface and what patterns it makes. Um, I am not that good at it, but okay. So that's simple. So that's going to be a pale red and and blue, yeah, but that's a good start. So now I could just print that and make spot dots on the paper, and that can be a really nice pattern. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little manipulation, um, just something pretty simple. So we'll just do a, sort of a back and forth, like a feathery pattern. Um, if you look into the history of marbling, like all of these different patterns have names, and I don't know what any of them are. Um, but uh, but if you're if you're a skilled and knowledgeable marbler, you can make you know specific name patterns that are associated with different bookbinding traditions or whatever, and that's pretty cool. Okay, so now a piece of paper. It's been treated with mordant, um, and it's still slightly damp. Um, but that's fine. And then you just want to gently drop it onto the ink. Uh, ideally, you don't catch any bubbles because those will be visible. Um, and you don't want to swish it around too much. Although actually there are techniques where you do move the paper as you apply the, it to the ink. I caught a bubble. That's not good. Okay. And so that's done. Um, it's now, it's picked up, it instantly picks up the ink. You don't have to like let it sit there. Um, and then you peel it off and um, that super didn't work, did it? Hmm. This paper still may be too damp uh, to actually print. You can see it's got an interesting pattern, um, but the ink didn't really stick. Um, so I'm gonna try one more and then I might have to actually let the paper dry a little more before I do this. Ugh. So I'm not going to show you this because I don't want to move the camera, but um, you do you do need to rinse the paper. Um, so after you print, you have to take it to a sink, dripping ink all over the bathroom, and rinse it. And you can see after rinsing, it looks basically the same. Uh, and that's partly the mordant. It just, it, the ink sticks really good. Um, and even with the rinsing off of the water, it won't come, come away. Okay, and then you hang it to dry. Okay, for this one I'm going to do the rake.
and that's that. Now I have some of this really super nice and interesting paper uh, that I can work into the sets and hopefully make everything super interesting. So thank you for watching and I will see you again in future videos.